We got one view over here. Yeah, we're gonna start the live at seven o'clock, actually speaking or whatever. This is the first episode of Lost and Found Podcast. Please subscribe to um, my YouTube. The YouTube on TikTok is in my link. On Facebook, the YouTube is um, in the description. But how y'all doing, y'all? Today, my co host guest is my sister, Monique. I'm nervous. I don't know why this, and she's a whole YouTuber, y'all. I do not know why this girl is nervous. Because I don't want to talk about me. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about you and, then the people and me. Don't know me. How is the sound, y'all? Can y'all hear us good? Let us know how the sound sound. It about to be 7 o'clock. The people over here had the thumbs up. I see that. I'm probably going to turn the comments off. Those just requests don't pay attention to those. Hey, Shelby. Good afternoon, y'all. Good afternoon. Can y'all hear me? Please let me know if y'all can hear me. Let me know. Let me know if y'all can hear me. Oh, they probably thumbs up too. They did. That was it. Oh, y'all know I'm a little slow. Okay, TikTok say TikTok say they can hear me. Facebook, y'all can hear me. It's seven o'clock, y'all. Welcome to Lost and Found podcast, y'all. This is my first episode of Lost and Found. Where we find lost souls and bring them back to Christ through t- testifying, healing, evolving, and having a tough conversations. We got my sister co-host, Monique McFadden, y'all, the big YouTuber. I wish I had a little clap of hands. <laughs> y'all, she finally is a paid YouTuber, y'all. I'm going to um, put her... I'm going to put her information below when we get off the live or whatever. But today, we're just going to be talking about, like... What she did evolving because y'all last year, around this time, we was not in the same place where we at now. So we're going to be reflecting on last year and this year and evolving how it is on a journey and all those things. And my journey as well, asking her questions because I know my journey is a lot for everybody. So I want to hear her point of view from it. So go ahead, introduce yourself. Introduce mm-hmm. your YouTube. I don't know why this crack like this. Like we ain't been doing this for years now. I don't go live and talk to people that I do know, but y'all know I'm Monique. You can hear my voice, how nervous I am. <laughs> Monique, Matt Fan, y'all know her. What's your YouTube name? Vibing After Dark underscore with Mo. That long don't YouTube. forget the underscore, it is long. That long YouTube name, like I said, I'm going to have to put it in the comments when we get off the live because that thing is so long. So, um, how you feel that you got, you a paid YouTuber now? How you feel? I'm excited because that's something I've been was working towards. And like I posted on my Facebook the other day, like I was about to give up. But I just kept on going because I just seen the views really wasn't going nowhere. But then, but then I know like it do take time. Like, it do. But yours happened fast. That was fast. A little under two years. And it's because I switched topics or whatever. Like when I got on, I just was doing things about me. And then if you want to be a YouTube, a YouTuber... When you start off, you got to do like informational stuff or stuff that's trending or whatever. People don't know you like that, so you're only going to get like the little followers that you do know. And that'll be the only people viewing because nobody knows you, so they really don't care. So, yeah. And what kept you going? Because you've been consistent like every day. Well, you post every day or every once a week? When I first started, I was like doing it three times a week. And that's when I said I started doing my unpopular opinions. Mm -hmm. And then like little local people had... You know, they was liking it or whatever. But then I started doing vlogs. Trying to get my watch time. I was up because that's the hardest part. But then I just started. I did. Well, I did one topic on like celebrity news. Because while I'm working, that's all I do is watch YouTube. Like celebrity gossip, celebrity news. And then I just see how much um, when you do make it big, like that's a real good income. And that can replace your job sometimes. So hopefully we're going to make it there. Yeah. I never thought that she would step out her shell and do this. I did. But she did. And you've been doing it for two years now? I think it's um, September will be two years. That's good. Because YouTube, I cannot stay consistent with YouTube. But I'm so proud of her. I never saw her been passionate about something like that. Because 
Y'all know Monique. If y'all know her personally, y'all know that she stay to herself. She don't say much. She don't do much. She get in, get out. That's the job. That's what she do. But for her to be on YouTube doing all that, y'all, I'm so happy for her. See her passionate about something. Like I said, I never see my sister passionate about anything. She don't show emotions. So to see her showing emotions behind that, I'm proud of you for that. What advice you got for, like, people that's starting their YouTube, like, how to stay consistent and I got you that, but, like, what, what advice would you tell them? Especially for me, because I need advice. Just stay consistent. Like, even if you don't feel like it, just put something up. Like, just put something up and, you know, just to keep the algorithm going. Last year, we made a video. It was in July, I think. Yeah, July 2022. And you remember the video I'm talking about? Where um, we was doing the, um, have you ever? Oh, question? oh, God. <laughs> yeah. All the old videos still up there, so... But no, I, I really cherish that video for real because in that video, that's an easily reflect on like where we've been then and now. Like that video probably got how many views then? I'm not sure. I don't remember. It probably had got like 200 something views. And then this year now she in the thousands getting views and all that. But the games that we was playing, the questions that she was asking me, y'all, one of the main questions was, have I ever had a homosexuality experience? And y'all, I'm saying this time out, it's a lifestyle. Period. They ain't going nowhere. And now look at me now. Fully straight. Delivered. Saved. Sanctified. All of that stuff. And now, where she at? Where you at now? How you felt like you evolved? Like, what changed from that video last year to now? See, this one said I didn't want to be live. <laughs> but, um, I actually felt like I was stuck. Or whatever. And not really accomplishing nothing that I wanted to accomplish. So I'm actually accomplishing things now. Like even with my sign business or whatever, I started that as a hobby. I never wanted to be a boss though. Like I always said that I never wanted to be a boss and it's okay to not. I feel like it's okay because everybody don't have to be a boss. Somebody got to work. And I was one of the people that felt like I just had to work. So doing different things and I just feel like I accomplished some things. That's good. That's good. You you really did. Even with the yard signs, y'all. This girl came in one day. I was doing it. She was like, yeah, I'm finna do these yard signs. Next day I came to the house, the package is outside. And I'm like, oh, she was serious for real. Because Monique do not do nothing. So when she said that, I'm like, and I'm about to steady coming in every single day. They still coming in. I'm like, yeah, she's doing that. So y'all hit her up from the, um, for the yard signs or whatever. Like I said, click a page. I don't think I tagged you in this live. Um, I should have tagged you in this live. But share this and um, click her stuff and subscribe to her YouTube channel and book a sign because graduation is going. But still, book a sign for the birthdays and all of that stuff. But yeah, like she said, back then, where I was at mentally, I was still trying to find myself. I was on my healing journey, but without Christ. And y'all know I'm big on Christ now. But then I was just like, I had a little bit of Christ, but not full Christ. And then I was just like trying to find peace and happiness and it went in the wrong direction. It went to, towards me doing like new age spirituality and doing all type of different things. Really looking for my happiness and peace in people, places, and things that was not God. And I just had God on the side. And y'all, y'all ever be doing the thing that you know you should be doing and asking God to watch you and cover over you? <laughs> that was me my whole life last year. Like I know, I know that. I ain't supposed to be doing this. I know that this is not for me. I know God don't want me there. But I'm praying that God be by my side while I'm going through this. And I'm like, that's not it. But when I made that video last year, last year I was just trying to live my best life. And I, I did live my best life last year. That's why this year I'm I'm out the streets. The streets ain't for me no more. But them pews for me though. Them streets, ain't, ain't, them streets ain't for me. But I, I changed so much because that video, I feel like... Both of us matured a lot too, though. Like, I know I definitely matured. I what was... made you change? What made me change? Like, what? What made you change from, like, the spirituality? Like, you was doing, like, the readings or whatever. What made you change from that to now feeling like that's not of God in the Christian way? Because, so looking for peace. And one thing leads to another. One thing about me, when you, when God chooses you, he's going to always choose you. No matter if you wander off, he's going to make sure that his child is taken care of. Because... We lack, we perish because of the lack of knowledge. And that's exactly what that was. So I was just in the direction of looking for peace, looking for love. I got tired of being in the same cycle with the enemy of 
being with people, um, allowing them to get to me emotionally and just draining me. And so I just, I mean, every day I prayed, nothing really changed but my direction. So I kept praying. I just kept getting closer to God. And God, just like I tell people all the time, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and he will give you all those things and stuff. So I was just seeking the kingdom in everything I was doing. Continue to pray, continue to talk to God, and God showed me the way. And I've always been obedient to God anyway. Now, when it comes to females and being in relationships, that was a little bit hard. But I learned now. But I just was being obedient, and God was like, he, after a week, y'all, I made, and that's how God worked. God would take what the enemy made for evil and use it for good. Because when I did a readers, I did a readers for like a week and a half. Within a week and a half, I made a thousand something dollars. That was my rent right there. And I just had moved to. God was like, I'm going to give you a little money. But I'm going to show you afterwards. And that's exactly what he did. So he, I was in the bathroom getting ready. And like, I was already having like a lot on my shoulders. Just a lot of energy from different people doing the readings and just doing hair. Because I don't know if people know, but when you touch hair, that's energy swapping right there. And it's just like being around different spirits, just taking on a lot. Because I'm doing the readings, I'm doing hair. I'm still trying to manage a business and all of that. And it was just too much for me. So God was like, I got something better for you. This is not for you. This is not of me. I got something better for you. And I was like, okay, God, I'm trusting you. And that's when I started doing the mentoring. And that was good, too. But then it was like, because I wasn't where I needed to be at with God, he wouldn't let nothing flourish for me. And even when I'm going to be honest, and I want this podcast to be like vulnerable and all about honesty. When I had my business, Love You, that was based around the wrong thing, the right idea, but the wrong thing. So with Lost and Found... That's why I love you was me loving myself. Lost and found was me being lost in loving myself because I wasn't allowing God to be God. Now I'm found. So that's why I say it's lost and found is to bring the lost souls back to God and Christ and just help you heal and evolve because healing only happens when you allow God to help you heal. You can heal by yourself. And I'm sorry, but I done did a tree hugging. I done did grounding myself, walking the ground. That is not enough when your soul needs healing. And the only person that can heal your soul is Christ, unless you allow the enemy to heal your soul. And I don't think you want to do that. So, um, yeah, God was like, it's not for you. I'm going to show you what's for you. And I just been being obedient. I closed down Love You. Um, because when I was selling the stuff, like, the only thing that I was selling was the journals. Everything else on that site was not selling. And it wasn't selling because that stuff was not of God. God didn't allow that to happen. So, um... I know some of y'all saw my TikTok where it went viral. I threw away my sage because it was just one day, like, I have been meant to throw away my sage, but I could never get the, like, I just could never remember to throw it away. But one day, it was Easter Sunday, and God was like, throw away your sage. So I was throwing it away, and he was like, put it on TikTok. And I put it on TikTok, but darkness ruled over the world more than anything. So that, of course, got a lot of attraction because a lot of people was into that. And like I said, I was into that. I didn't see no problem with that until God came to me himself and told me it was a problem. And of course, I had comments saying that, how you know it was God told you that? Because I had light saging. I wouldn't throw away sage if I had like that. That's God came to me and told me that. And like I said, I'm obedient to God. Like, I listen to God because God knows our best interest. And not just any God. Jesus Christ knows our best interest because I have believed in God. But see, like, I didn't say Jesus' name a lot then. Now I'm saying Jesus' name a lot because some people don't be worshiping the same God you worship. And I don't know nobody. Everybody has their own path to any religion. But I just know that Jesus Christ chose me. He called me. And now I'm living my purpose and walking with my purpose. So then, that was a lot. It was. <laughs> it was okay. It was straight to the point. Um, How do you feel like mentally, like, did you grow since then? Like, where you at mentally now? I'm better because, like I said, I'm more happier that I accomplished something. So, in that space, I'm, I'm better. But I still got things to do, things I want to do. So, I don't know how to answer that. But other than that, I say mentally, not physically. You ask. You was answering the physical. mentally. I mean, I think I have things to work on and things to do for my mental still. That's what I'm saying. I feel that. I feel that. I'm about to say something. That, that's what I need to work on. I need to go to the doctor because I got ADHD real bad. Real bad. This girl got it real bad. Like, it don't make no sense. I don't know why, but I realize having, like, mental stuff, 
My mental depends on my spirituality. So if I'm not right with God spiritually, my mental just downhill. And y'all, that's why I'm so scared to fail. That's why I'm so scared to fall. That's why I'm so scared. I say, but I think you got too much of things that's always going on and on your mind. So like, you'll forget this. You're doing this, but you'll go to the next thing and my it's friend, like, you all over the place. My all friend Danelle said that the other day, but it's because like, I think it because comes from having a business, honestly, because. When I started having a business, and then when I had got what a girl needs or whatever, that just was another story. But we're going to talk about this at the end. Cause you know how to just be calm, like, not be all over the place. Do you know how to just sit in calmness? Yeah. I and not worry about what you got to do, what got to get done, this and that. Like, so, like, how is your mental when you just sit in calm? When I'm sitting calm, it's good. Like, I'm sitting calm. You sure? Yeah, but, like... Because right now I know I got like 50 million things to do. Like I got probably about 10 people to respond back to the book day appointment. And no, I don't want no booking website. I'm old school. But I might need an assistant though, so I might get assistant. But like that is bothering me. I hate having people waiting. And I hate having to do things. Like I finally booked my photo shoot and stuff. And that's good. Oh, y'all. I, I got a dove for my photo shoot. A what? A dove. A bird dove? A, bu a bird. Um, okay. <laughs> you know I be going all out when it comes to these photo shoots or whatever. But so pretty. yeah, it is. But um, like sitting, not thinking about nothing right now. Um, I'm still thinking about stuff. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you could just sit and breathe and not think about anything until it get done. And then when and that then get done, then you on to the next thing. Yeah. And so then, you really can't. You really don't know how to just sit down and just. Take it in of doing nothing for a second. That's why I think I need anxiety medicine. But I wouldn't say that my anxiety is bad because before it would affect me like mentally. Like now it's just a physical thinking thing. Like I'm just all over the place. But mentally before it would be like I'm sad, I'm depressed, or about to lead to depression or whatever the case may be. But now it's just like I know I got this to do. I know I got that to do. You would get depressed because you had too much to do. No, you it's just depressive. like a dark cloud like when i'm overstimulated i just i said overstimulated but i do i do feel like that though like when it's a lot of pressure on me when i'm overstimulated i just shut down i'd rather just shut down then let me say the stars thank you thank you for the stars i'd rather just shut down or oh, my body just shut down because it's a lot going on in my brain like i got brain fried before plenty of times <laughs> i'm for real i, I know you remember, you remember that year when I was getting ready for the photo shoot? <laughs> Y'all, like I said, this is a vulnerable um, podcast. That year I was getting ready for the photo shoot in Hollywood, that event that I had in Hollywood with Where the Girl Needs. And I was getting ready, and I had on a onesie, and I had to pee. <laughs> Y'all, I couldn't take the onesie off. And then my ex-girlfriend, Morgan, she tried to help me take it off. It didn't work. Y'all ended up peeing up. And I had to, um, oh, yeah, I feel like she had to dry it and hand wash it and everything. Like, Yes, I... I Truly thankful for that. Because, y'all, but that's just how, like, my mind is. Like, I shut down. I don't know how to respond to certain stuff like that. I just shut down, and I try not to, but I just shut down. Hey, people on TikTok, I just shut down. I don't know why. But, I don't know. And the crazy part is, like, I know a therapist needs a therapist. But like I mean, like I can mentor somebody all day every day. Most therapists need a therapist, like you said. Yeah, I can mentor somebody all day every day. But when it comes to me, I that's the thing. I just know what to do. Things to other people. Well, most people always have the solution for somebody else's problem, but they don't have it for their own. That's how it always works. Yeah, and it's like I know what to do. I just choose not to do it. Like I just choose not to make time. Like, yeah. Like, I hate when people question. I'm big on convenience. I would pay for convenience more than me doing it myself especially if i got the money i definitely would pay for um convenience but um that's true yeah what's your plans in the future like what you got planned what things that you want to tell to the world mm. nothing <laughs> <laughs> what's my future plans that's stuff that i keep to myself that's why oh yeah well you keep to yourself that's that's fine and that you can share that's fine. i'm not i'm not really an open person y'all that's why i say i'm nervous to do this i don't go live and i don't really talk about me so i don't well sorry I don't sorry if i'm boring but it's okay y'all 
This is my personality. <laughs> but everybody got everybody got a person. So somebody is born just like you and they agree with you and they have fun with you just sitting. And that's fine. Like, what made me be so vulnerable with social media, first of all, is because I don't care. Because we human. Y'all about to sit here and act like y'all ain't never did certain stuff before. That's not me. One thing about it, I'm saved, but I'm still me. Like, I'm not finna... No, me and Allie was talking last night, and she was like, sometimes I'll be getting ghetto. I'm like, yeah. As long as they get the word across, that's all that matters. Yeah, Eugene, that's my own um, T-shirt. I had made us for the event that I was talking about, actually. But, um... I just rather be vulnerable and authentic because at the end of the day, there's somebody out there wishing that they could either have somebody to side with or they agree with or they feel alone. And ever since God told me that um, my story would be so much survival guide one day, that's when I started opening up speaking and doing hair too. Like, I used to be the hairstylist that never speak. Or like, I would speak but never like really talk if I've been talking to or something like that. But seeing like older women and a lot of people come to me and they just feel like they can pour their problems on me and I don't mind at all like that's my calling that put me that let me know that I had anointing on my life for real because like random people can just come with me I'm sure like a bunch of y'all that's my clients y'all watching y'all can definitely say they are, yeah that's me because a lot of my clients they just come to me and pour it out on me and that made me realize like dang I'm going through the same thing but they never knew so when I was to open up to them, they be like, girl, I never thought you would be going through that. Or like, I never thought that happened to you and this and that third. And like, we all go through real stuff. Like, mental illness is real. And you can't, if you don't have your mind, sometimes you can't save your mind. And it's hard. It's, it's really hard. It is. But you know what? I ain't never had no mental illness until I got closer to God. Like... I ain't gonna say mental illness. I ain't got no mental illness. <laughs> Spiritual warfare. That's what I'm gonna call it. Because spiritual warfare is real. Like, you're gonna go through the depressive states. But the only thing about spiritual warfare, the only person that can bring you out of that is God and you fighting to get your salvation. You fighting for your salvation every single day. But, like, you never had a depressive moment or nothing like that? Yeah. Depression is real. Yeah. You did? I never thought. I'm mad. Because my thing is, like, if I'm feeling down or if I get depressed, nine times out of ten, I just go to sleep. <laughs> when I wake back up, I'm like, good. That's like, me. for real. Like, if somebody get mad or I'm feeling down about something, I feel like, like something ain't going right in my life, like, let me just take a nap. Like, so, y'all know me, y'all know I like to sleep. So I would just go to sleep and then I'll get back up and I like dust myself up and, and keep on going. That's just me. Like And it's, the sad part is that's the biggest form of depression. It probably is. That's the sad part. Because I'm just the same way, like But I don't dwell on things. So like whatever will go on or whatever, like, that's not gonna go in my favor or whatever. Like I'll be down, like I say, I'll be down for like a day. Hey my she's talking about she will. She will what? Go to sleep? That girl will sleep. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like but I'm going to just go to sleep I'm like and I'll wake back up and I'll be fine. Like, seriously. Like, I'm going to tell y'all this morning, and it, it's like when I'm overworking, when I get tired, I feel like an automatic depression come on. So, like, this morning, I had to get up at 5 o'clock to do hair or whatever at 6. Then, she was a squeezing, so I didn't have enough jam. When it come out to be, I did have enough jam. I ain't even opened the second jar that I bought just now. But I had to go to the hair store. The hair store opened at 8. I'm in the parking lot at 7, so I'm sleeping. And I'm like, hey, bro, this is the life I chose. This really is the life I chose. Like, to be sleeping in the parking lot because you got to... <laughs> That's a nice laugh. But to be sleeping in a parking lot because... <laughs> Me and Precious used to say that. But to be sleeping in a parking lot when you got 50 million things to do. And I couldn't even sleep really like... That's the crazy part, like how you said my mind just be, because even then when I'm sleeping, I'm like, you got so much to do today. You got to get three hairs done a day and get ready, get dressed, do your hair, do your makeup for the podcast. While I'm trying to sleep in that 20 minute span of sleeping in the parking lot. And then stuff like that, I shut down and I start crying. But I did get better with, sorry to control, but I did get better with sleeping, especially with this YouTube thing, because that's something, like I said, I wanted to do. So instead of going to sleep, I would sit in the car and just make my videos in the car instead of going in the house. Because if I know I go in the house, I'm going to sleep. 
So I think I did work on the sleeping a little bit better. Sleeping made me depressed though. Like when I have a problem now, I try to like pick myself up. Now when I have problems, I go straight to the Bible and I go straight to my knees and I be expecting God to fix it in a moment. And my shit's still going on top of and you will. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. But yeah, I just expect like my problems to go away as soon as I pray. And sometimes it works like that, sometimes it don't work like that. That's why when you get closer to God, you just have to, you, like, my biggest battle I faced last week was me thinking that I got God figured out. Or me, I wasn't thinking that, but my heart was thinking that. And God was showing me better than he could tell me. Why would you think that? Monique sleep, Monique cry. <laughs> <laughs> Let my chance. So that's how we deal with our depression. <laughs>
I, and I, I, I literally have a boring life. I don't do anything. Yeah. So, and the crazy part, y'all think she the meanest? Maisha really the one. Maisha the one that's outgoing, but Maisha be the first one to fight somebody. I feel. I feel that. <laughs> No, Maisha just, her patience really got thinner because she got older. Like, she don't got Maisha still got more patience than But us. I think a lot of people just count on her. And I think it she came got love with everybody counting on her. And that's another thing, too. So it's like, that's that's the biggest thing, too. Like, since I got on this journey with God, I do have a lot of people depending on me, and I don't know, and I don't see it. Because it always been me, myself. Like, and that's what I was telling Elaine the other day. Maisha said, girl, stop. <laughs> Like I, I do see. appreciate you though, just so you know, my children. Yeah, we I appreciate, appreciate you because you do have a lot that you deal with from us. Everybody we call her the mama of the family, like and the outside life. family, and my friends and my clients and all that too. Because everybody, if she read them, my should gonna help. So that's and that's the same. Is getting there. That's the same <laughs> with the nail too on TikTok. That's the same with the nail because the nail was like, I already know when I move to South Carolina, I'm gonna just be helping you every day. I said, why you say that for? Because that's how you go, for real. But Danelle don't know I'm like that, and she even said that. But I know you like that, and that's how you go. But, see, that's the thing. And, y'all, let's talk about She this. would actually let people, like, do everything for her. I'm not that tight. And she still tried to... What she said? Fry the best chicken. Who, fr who fried the chicken here? <laughs> not I think that's the saying. I think that's oh. the saying. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know I'm young, because who fried the best? Why so much she can't cook like that? Now she can, but back then I don't know how to fry no chicken. Oh, good. That's funny. <laughs> but oh, she's laughing. That girl slow now. She's slow a little bit. Slowly, a little bit. It's okay. But I got yeah, listen, like I was saying, she will let people do everything for her. But that's the thing. And she no, no. Let me tell you how she go. You were acting like you were acting like I got this to do. I got this to do. Oh, I'm about to do this. And you would sit right there and let everybody do everything you just said you got to do. That's the old. That's me. how you go. That's the old me, man. She's bringing up the past. So now I work. But like I said, too, like, even with that, it's like I have a, I don't know why people do everything for me. Like, I was just telling my friend the other Because you said they don't let people do everything for you. No, but people just be willingly want to do stuff for me. Like, today, one of my friends, he he was like, get your, um, he told me what color to get on my nails. I'm like, you want to pay for them? And he was like, yeah. Like, why people want to do stuff for me? Because you said you must be paying for them, so he's going to say, yeah. But still, even then, like, I, I don't say stuff and people still do stuff for me. Like, that's why I tell people all the time. Every relationship I've been in was not bad because they all took care of me for real. Like, I mean, I took care of myself. And I think that's another thing, too. A lot of people, even friend-wise, like Danelle, like, a lot of people is attracted to independence. And I feel like I'm independent. And she said 50 stars with that. Who, my? It's favor, Alasia. That's exactly what it is. It's favor because my anointing. Like, people will randomly do stuff for me. I promise y'all. When my sister, you do X. Exactly. But I don't ask y'all. Okay, but I feel like I barely ask for things. Like, if I ask for things, then that means I really need it for real. But, like, Alasia said, it's favor because I promise y'all, by me talking about this, when I get alive, I promise y'all, somebody gonna offer me something. Just like that. And. Even with, like, my car, my apartment, or whatever the case may be, like, I didn't have to do none of the stuff that other people did. I feel like applications and, you know, did all that stuff. But these people told me with this apartment, um, I couldn't have cash apps in my bank statement. And it was cash app, cash app, cash app, cash app. And look where I'm at in this apartment. So it's just favor for real. Like, people just randomly want to do stuff. And then um, somebody else said that the night because they was like, because your spirit is genuine. You're a genuine person. You're a great person. And they see a lot in me. And they want to see me go far. So they want to help as much as they can. So. That could be it. It's favor. You wonder why people come closer to you. Always get closer to you. I always want to do things with you. I want you around in general. Like, there's some people that just want me around in general. Just to sit there. But I've been the one that be wanting people around. In general. I didn't know how to be alone at one point. Now I do. Now I want to be alone all the time. But I think that's another thing, too. Like, I told you the other day what I was saying. She was saying, like, how... You remember, Micah told me you called me about, um... About last, <laughs> last week? Yes. Now, I'm gonna get emotional, but that girl had me over here about to be stressed out. Y'all, because I have faith, they think I'm that's delusional. Why? What, what, what made you... I can't feel like that. No. What, what made you cry over that? Because... 
Y'all know me better than that now. Y'all know I ain't about to do nothing stupid like that. But it's like... It's the text that you sent out. I wasn't all the way feeling like that, so... But y'all didn't read it, and y'all act like I never... Before I got this apartment, I went to go look for apartments. No, it's, it was different. Because of test drive. No. Next subject. <laughs> this is an authentic podcast, and we talk about everything. <laughs> What's some of the hardest things you had to face in life? Oh, so you want you want to talk about it? I ain't want to talk about it. I, like I said, I'm open because there's somebody out there that just like me, and I'm I'm real, I'm authentic. Y'all, I'm sorry. If y'all know me, y'all know I got bad allergies and my nose will run. So that girl allergic to elbow. Her fragrance is um. It's right. Bothering me. My lashes or hers? Probably mine, because she got them baby lashes on. I'm about to say. You got baby lashes on? And you know I got to change up, because my eye, you know my <laughs> <laughs> And you still put those things on your eyes. No, these are the magnetic ones. These ain't the other ones. <laughs> my eyes are swollen up, y'all. And I got these from the hairstyle a long time ago. My eyelids was burned up. Believe it, or not, believe it or not, I got these a long time ago. And my face look good on your phone, Monique. I know, y'all. I was talking to Android, but Android, my phone look better than yours right now. Obviously, I mean, honestly. I need a 14. I'm going to get a 14. I got a 13, but that's why I don't be like an iPhone like that. But these lashes came from the hair store for like two, three, nine, nine, And these are like my third time wearing them. My last pair, I wore them things about 10 times. I ain't even going to play. Thank you, sis. Ooh, that's why okay. the makeup is definitely giving y'all. I did this in like uh, 35 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes. She could be doing makeup pretty. Who, Libby? You. Oh, Libby makeup be pretty too. Libby pictures be pretty Libby too. Libby pictures. Your pictures be pretty all the you time. You need to be a Libby. model, girl. Yeah. Definitely be a model. But yeah, what you, what was some of what's some of the hardest things you had to deal with? What's some of the hardest things you had to deal with? People. You see her face how it turned like that. <laughs> People. Why? What made it so hard? Well, that job make it hard for one. Um people, some family members, um Yeah. That. Family members? Some family members, you know, what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, but um, you said what? What's some hard things that I had to face in life? What's what's Honestly, what's, what's, what's you really like a challenge? What's the challenge? Like that's stopping you from being everything you want to be. I would say me. Yes, your biggest enemy is me. your inner me. Because, like I said, I never wanted to get out and do nothing different. Like, I just felt like working, that's it. So, when you put your mind to doing something, I mean, that's all you got to do. But I was just stuck in the, the mind frame of I don't feel like doing nothing else. So That's a slavery mindset. It's a, it's a poverty mindset, too. But it's okay because... But I'm saying, yeah, like, I, I wouldn't even say all of that, too, because it's okay. People don't have to do, like... Everything, if they don't want to do everything, like they have all these taxes out to do. They don't have to. They don't have to. I think you're talking about like a job aspect or something like that. You talking about anything else? That's what I'm saying. That's the only thing I feel like is a challenge for me. Like, well, that's like JT. She feel like she don't need to do nothing else. She could just rap. But is that, I mean, I feel like some people will be like, oh, she's stupid or that's just like her mindset. But if that's what she want to do and she's comfortable with doing what she's doing, she make her own money. Why Why everybody else got to put their opinion on it? Like, that's her life. That's what I said. That's she her. ain't bothering nobody else, so what? That's her life and that's the stage that she at now. And she got everything. Some people just be content with everything. And I definitely understand that, but I think I was talking about more so like, you doing more. I don't know, just... Every day we evolve it, and you know, our mindset should change. It doesn't just have to be with work, just like in general as well, too. Um, life, financial relationship. Like, because even if you don't want to do nothing else, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think because I just got a lot of my mind. I just I'm about to say, what else? I mean, what else? Like I said, you one of the people that you do, like, you try to get something here, something there, something there, something there, and that's okay, too. But it's okay for the people who don't feel like doing all of that. or don't want to do all of that. I just want people to make it normal for you can do what you want to do. You don't have to do this just because you see somebody else got five, six businesses, got this, and I mean, look like they got a lot going on. Don't make yourself feel less because you don't want to do all of that. 
Like, right. And some people content. Ain't, ain't, I, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with being content. Just don't be comfortable, I guess. I don't know. I guess I think about me and my aspect of things. Like, I can't just stick to one thing because I feel like I'm going to get comfortable. Then I'm going to, I'm just scared to fail. Because if I get comfortable, I feel like I'll be homeless one day. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I just feel like I'm constantly doing stuff. And first of all, because I have, like, I want to. they giving you peace, though, in your mind? Because, like, your mind is steady going. Yeah, it's giving me peace because I'm having peace. How? Oh. If I'm doing, like, not actually physically doing things, but if I'm having assets and, like, investments and stuff, I don't have to do nothing. But you got to worry about all the investments, the assets, I mean, business and this and that and this and that. Well, right now, so your mind is constantly on go. That's why I asked you earlier. Do you know how to just calm your mind? Now, I feel like I wouldn't know how to. Well, I know how to, but I feel like until I get to my goal, which is sitting back relaxing. Well, your goal ain't gonna never stop because you gonna have more goals. And I'm not saying there's something wrong with wanting more and having more goals, but I just feel like too, your mind ain't at peace because you always on the next thing. You always on this. You always on that. I feel like being self-employed, it takes more work out of me to, like, get a check. So, I feel like that's why my mind is always on go. Like, when my next dollar going to come from, I got to make sure I'm set. Because at the end of the day, I do hair. I don't have, like, benefits and all that. Which, I can still get benefits. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to work on that now. But it's like, eventually, hair got to go somewhere now. That's why I say I want to retire by 30. And I feel like... I don't know what God is planning on for me to do, but I, I do feel like it might be before 30 before I retire from here. And I'll be happy with that, because by then... Get that thing, get that thing right there. What? Well, my, yeah. my piercing? Thank you. Get that thing. You be so scared to talk, girl. I don't care. I do not care. Hey, Nehemiah. But yeah, I just be so focused on, like, getting stuff done, because I know, like I said, I'm going to be retiring from here soon. And eventually, like my other business will um, take over that to the point. And then I'm hire workers. Like, everything that God sent me up to do now is for the better. For my peace. Because God told me last week, when I forgot the nail birthday, y'all, I was so sad. I was so mad at myself. I forgot one of my closest friends. Like, my closest. We talk all day, every day. Like, I'm having a conversation with this girl on her birthday. and even told her happy birthday. That's how my mind is. Now, that's what I don't like about my mental. I don't like that because God said you got priorities, but you don't know how to prioritize or whatever the word is. And I'm like, we say, you know, it's God first and this and that and third, but my everyday life don't show that. God showed me that, you no, know, hair is your, is first in your life because you move around here. Like, you don't come and get on your knees until you finish doing hair or until you got time. You don't check on your friends until you have time doing, from aside doing hair. Like, you don't think about the stuff that matters until... You finish with hair. So that's why it's like, you know, like people waiting on me to respond for them to book. And I feel bad. Like, I really do feel bad, but I feel like that's a conditional thing. And that's also a slavery mindset, too, because, well, not a slavery, but it's like a, a, a stuck, captured mindset because all I know is hair. So I'm scared to lose hair, to be honest. I'm scared to stop doing hair. Like, if I retire, I have to have enough and I have to have, like, a full life behind me, behind me when I stop doing here. So I won't just up and stop doing here. Some people, they be like, I'm not doing here no more. And they go look for a job or they go find something else. I have to be fully set up. Secure. Yeah, before I just stop doing here. I've been doing here for 10 years. So, how you feel about me and my journey? And, like, how you look at me? What's your point of view of me from your point of view? Not my the change and all of that. How did I change? Talk about how did I change? Hey, sis. How did, how did I change? How did it have effect on you and the family? What's your opinion on it? And all of that. I'm glad that you found me, God. Or whatever. I'm happy that you, you know, speak Speak up. Are oh, y'all can't hear me? I can't hear you. I'm happy that you're Finding God, I'm happy that you find a peace with that because that was definitely a journey for the whole family when she was starting to get into it. I feel like people who start to get into like different religions or start digging into things like that, 
they go through a, a, a phase of where it's chaotic. Chaotic. And that affect that did affect the whole family because we felt like you was like going through a mental illness at that point for real. Like you was going through you was going through like a breakdown or whatever. So it's like And not a breakdown that just happened in one day and that's it. No, it was a long time. And then that's why I said like even the other day when you had text that and You thought <laughs> I, I, you thought thought I was like, relaxing. I thought this girl was like, I said, oh, Lord, she's in this cult mindset. That's really what I said. That's what we're talking about. I said, you in this cult, like, mindset. But, like you all said, I'm not as deep in it as you are. So, things that you might say ain't going to be things that I'm going to say or whatever, I guess, because I'm not deep in it. But one thing I do say, and I always tell you, I don't like how you be like, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. I because, always say, you always say that, y'all don't understand. Because, why I say that? Because how I view things and how you view things is different. I'm not going to say between the flesh, flesh and, and spirit. spirit. Yeah, that's definitely and, what and she was I know, going I know um, Tara can agree with me for real. Tara, hit me out on this. Like, why I feel like y'all don't understand? Because it's things about y'all that I don't understand, but I don't try to understand because I know I'm on a different level than that. I know I'm not there. So, I, and in certain stuff, y'all... I feel like y'all won't understand because God talks to people differently. Like how you say it's a, like a cult mindset. In my head, if we wasn't alive, I would have been going at you with that. Like a cult, really? I would have been saying something like that. Because... But that's how we felt and what you said. And that's what I'm saying. We giving you our perspective, but you in it so deep that you, ain't, you can't even see what we seeing or what we saying. But that's the thing what... It's crazy. So imagine it's a fence in between us. And imagine I'm on this fence and you beside me. Now, if I step over this fence, I know what's on this side of the fence because I've been in both places. You still have to step over the fence. And I feel like, too, like, we think it realistically. Yeah, you can have... Yeah, I'm not saying don't, y'all. Please don't take this wrong way. Because I yeah, believe in God. Authentic and all of that. I believe in God. I have the faith, too. But it's a, it's a line between thinking in reality. God give you wisdom. To know what you can do and what you can't do, or whatever, versus saying like what you said the other day. And we so, go ahead and said it, y'all. I said that I was going to go test drive a car because speak it into existence. First of all, if God gave you a word, and I believe in speaking it into existence. Listen, if God gave you a word, go on that word. What I should have did was not told nobody because I could have did it, and God gave me that word, and it just happened. And it's still gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. Ain't nothing stopping that from happening. That's God. I'm will. never telling you that it's not gonna happen because I, I would never doubt you. I'm always on. You know, I'm always ten to one. I know, but because I told her, I said I'm gonna test drive a car on um, Saturday because God told me to test drive a car. She's thinking I'm gonna go to the dealership and pick up the car. No, Maisha, you still in this chat? Please speak up. Please speak up. Cause yeah, you did say you was gonna test drive the car, so Maisha was like asking questions like. You want me to talk all the way into what the conversation was about? I don't care. So, Maisha was like, um, look at Tara. <laughs> Maisha was like, okay, so you about to... Get him more debt. Get him more debt. Or, or is you trading it? Or, Maisha just asked the question, is it cost, do it cost more than what you already got? You got this apartment, you got this new car already, you got bills, 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 bills. So, realistically... And I'm not saying put yourself in a bubble because anything can happen, you know. Yeah, anything can happen. But if you already know, you already set up and you got all this right here that you got to take care of. And when you said God going to purchase it for me, you talking about Saturday. So, no, I mean, Nico, would... Nico asked a question and I answered her question. No, my shit was like, um, well, somebody... basically, basically, my shit was asking questions like, how you going to pay for it, basically. Like, you show you want to do this because my sister was asking you trade in your car and right. I didn't put no timeline on it so they assumed that I was talking about Saturday she was talking about Saturday so and I know how my name mind go because I'm kind of like that too when we want something we gonna go ahead and get it like that's how we go and so I know Monet, if she go to the dealership, she gonna test drive. You know how dealership people go. They gonna talk you but into you... getting it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They gonna talk you into getting it. And so what well, my thing is too, you already know with all the stuff that you got going on financially if they told you you approve, you're going to get it. But you're going to say, that's God. God did it. But what if, yeah, if they, they approve, yeah, they approve anybody. So, like, it's easy to get things these days. 
or whatever. If your credit decent, you got a little bit of money. But you, yeah. that's the that's the kicker right there. Me and you just have a conversation on what I'm doing with my credit and how much money I'm trying to get and all that stuff. But your journey, the way your journey was going, we can't tell. We can't tell if you're gonna really do this. So that's what we like. I know it's a sisterly instinct, and you y'all care about me. That's yeah, right. so yeah, that's what it was. was. We was just like, oh God, please don't let this girl do this. And she said, God, God did this for her. Because, yeah, you can get approved and you go feel like that's God doing this. But what about down the line? You can't really afford it. Where I'm at now, I'm not going to get approved. <laughs> I got too much <laughs> on my credit. So that that was just our thing of trying to be protect, protective of her. But, like I said, because she's so deep in it, when we try to be protective of her, she feel like we're attacking her. Or we, she feel like we just don't understand. Or we don't get it. And I don't. No, but when I come in, I'm getting, I'm getting when I that's so I get louder. Authentic. That's where you need to be at. But when I when I do stuff and when I get stuff, I live separately in the house from them. I don't talk to them every day. Like I talk to them every day, but actually having conversations like this, we don't really talk every day like that on stuff like that. So if I'm coming to them with something, what they I feel don't see or understand is that I done been thinking about this. God has been talking to me about this. Not just in one day and I decided to say this. No, it's been something that's been going on. I stayed by myself. Do hair all day, always thinking, always talking to God. So whenever I come to y'all with something, just know that God has stamped it. And it's not like, oh, I'm finna God going I'm saying God gonna purchase it because God will purchase it. Regardless if he was to tell me to go. And that's how my faith is. My faith is so strong. That's how I got this apartment. Like I said, I was not supposed to have this apartment. With my last apartment, with the last video. Sometimes. What? Read that out loud. It's too far. No, she said what I said. Sometimes things do fumble in our laps, and we think it's God, but it's sometimes it's self um, thing. And then also, my... Right, so that's why I'm saying. That's what, Elijah, that's why I was trying to tell her. And when I say, I, I'm not really an emotional type of person, but I was in my, I was at work, and we was texting. I was about to cry, because I'm like, oh my God, she's in this cold, like, mind state. She's saying, God about to purchase it. At this time, like I said, we thinking she was talking about Saturday. And that's the She's really going to purchase it Saturday, because like I said, I do know how these dealership people they'll talk you into getting something they talk you so fast and we could be excited and she gonna get it and she'd be like god did this for me but see this and so this is why i'm saying why people don't this why i say some people don't understand if i was to have this with my sisters in christ or somebody like actually actively you know have faith like i do i'm not even gonna say you don't have faith like i do because you clearly do but like if i was talking to like danelle or somebody else in that in that sister group they would be like girl god will get this for you like it will happen but with them, they was thinking, like, reality. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I and know. Like I, said, I know you're not saying it's not going to happen. We do do it. But, but they was thinking reality, and I'm, I'm thinking off of faith. But, like I said, it was an insult to me because it's like, y'all know me better than this, for one. For two, where I'm at now, and I was doing a fast. So, the enemy would not be in my head telling me something that I know God didn't tell me when I've been going through this fast for two weeks. When you're going through fast, that's the clearest you'll ever have God. You'll hear God so clearly. So for God to tell me that and it be the enemy, I knew that was not the enemy because I sit and meditate on the word. Like, I take it back to God before I actually do something. I'm so secure in my finances and falling, like, I do not want to fall. So I'm not going to go and do something stupid like that. But at the end of the day, if God was to tell me one day, just like with that red car, that red car, I woke up one day and say, I'm going to buy me a car. And I did. So it's times when God talked to us. And tell us certain things, and I'll be obedient. If I can up and leave, you know, something, then I can do something simple as that. But that's why I say, like, my faith is so strong. Like, I'm, I'm spiritual first nature. And being around, you know, like, people that's not into the faith that I am, or uh, not into it like I am, it's hard to kind of, like, how can, I'm not going to say it's hard to talk to them because we're talking now. But sometimes it just becomes, like, a heaviness, so I just quickly say you don't understand, or I don't talk, or I don't say nothing that I got going on because I feel like you won't understand because you got to have, you got to be in my position, hear the things that I hear from God, and have the faith that I have to understand what I'm saying. And sometimes a lot of stuff God do tell me is strictly out of faith, and I do it. And to y'all, it looked like it was already happening in the making. Some of that stuff just happened overnight. God told me to do, it, and it happened, and it's, it's flourishing and stuff like that. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm glad she was in the right mind state <laughs> and it didn't happen like that. But just look at it. Instead of thinking that we're attacking you or we just not agreeing or we not seeing things like you th seeing it because you're deeper in faith, just look at it as a second opinion and just an option to think about.
what we tell you. And I do think about it. But then it's crazy. Okay, so back to that too. When they was having, when they was talking about that stuff, two days before, I done had prophetic dreams and God been telling me certain stuff. And everything that happened that week and why I was really like uptight that whole week with everybody in the family, because everybody was going against what I was saying, whether that was faith-based or whatever, they was going against it. But God told me that prior week, what you, what I'm telling you to do is going to seem crazy. People not going to agree with you. You're going to have naysayers. You're going to have people telling you this and that third. But I want you to trust in my word. And that, that will show me your faith if you trust in my word. So the words I've been getting, I was standing on that. And even like little simple stuff, like just little simple stuff, they would have their own opinion about something. And I'm like, but God just told me this. But that's my problem. When God tells me something, I don't need to share it with everybody and like i said i should have just been and prepared you don't have to i should have been prepared because god told me that i was going to deal with oppression a lot in the last two weeks i mean just like i never dealt with i, I dealt with oppression before but not like how i dealt with it now since i gave my life to christ like i never saw people really mad at me giving my life to christ or mad about the things that i do and it's probably not them being mad it's probably them not understanding the faith and that's why i say all the time when y'all see when y'all see the things that god bless with me Bless me with that's just the glory, but y'all don't know the story at the end of the day. But that's why I'm always authentic. Like I'm always on TikTok. If y'all don't follow me on TikTok, my name is Monique McFadden on TikTok for the Facebook people. I'm always authentic, so whatever I speak on, that's my life. Like I don't mind showing you my bank account. I don't mind showing you zero dollars in my bank account and rent through tomorrow. I don't mind showing y'all that stuff because at the end of the day, somebody out there like me. And social media is a big facade, and I don't live for a facade. What you right. get on social media is what you get now. When I do hair, I look busted up. But when I'm on camera, y'all see this, but just know that same person that inside will come out whether I got makeup on or not, whether I look good or not, that same person will come out. Whether I'm saved or not, it's going to come out regardless. Now, if it's evil and anger and stuff, that I'm not going to let that come out because I don't allow anger to take a hold of me. No more. No more. But when it comes to... When it comes to... um. When it comes to stuff like that, like you had left and came back, she probably been sitting there quiet the whole time. Probably didn't want to speak on it. <laughs> and that's that's the thing. Like my family, they they don't like to talk about stuff. I like to talk about everything. I don't know why. I just like to talk about everything. Like I feel like I'm just so. What's the word? Forward. I always been forward. People used to call me being blunt or like rude and all that. I'm just forward. What's why I need a story for God? I already know what I'm saying in my head, so I might as well say it out loud. But anyway, you got anything else to say before I, um... Yeah, how you know what I did. Yeah, how you know I did that again. Because I was calling for you to... We talked about the situation with the car the other day. And last Saturday. And it got... It got... Energy rise. Her energy rise. Why stay low? Don't need that. That's just probably spam. But yeah, so... I feel like this first podcast did great, y'all. So let me give y'all a rundown. So the first um month, well, the ladies are intense. That's the word. That's the word. But yeah. I like having conversations like these for real. Like I've always been a big debater. That's how I know. And I think because it definitely is a big debater. I'm just like happy. I don't even feel like talking about it. Cause I stand firm on what I believe. Period. About my God, I'm gonna go behind him. Yeah, I'm like, oh. But not even about God, just in general. Like, I say, before, I just let, me, let you have it, whatever. Before I even um got on this walk with Christ or whatever, like, because I, I'm the type of person, I see both sides of it. So when I argue about whatever I see both sides of it, they feel like I don't get them when I see both sides of it. I just no, choose my side. that's what I'm saying. You be saying we don't understand. I ain't nobody, nobody says that but you. That's why I keep saying I don't like that. So, y'all, she don't like when I say they I'm don't understand. Like she don't like when I say y'all just don't understand. But, like, honestly, like, okay, Alaysia, you say you understand. You like that. If you having a conversation with somebody that, that's me not saying you understand. One thing about me, I'm going to go back and forth. And I think that takes too much energy to go back and forth. Why? You getting mad for what? But see, it's not getting mad. The opposition think we getting mad, but it's not getting mad. It's me just trying to. I gotta prove a point. Well, I think I get mad if you ain't understanding my, what I'm trying to say. So I just be like, whatever. And then that's me. I'm a teacher. I feel like I'm a teacher. So I be trying to. I ain't got time to teach nobody nothing. I be trying to get people to understand my side. Because, like I said, I feel like it's two sides to everything. So I want you to understand my side just as well as I understand your side. Don't just think one way. Think 
you know, be open minded to think everything. And that's why I debate for real. I really can debate. I think I do look at two sides of everything. Like, I look at both sides. And now that I'm with Christ for real, like, yeah, quiet. like you disagree. I was just thinking. But now that I got with Christ for real, it's like, I'm not going back and forth. People going to believe what they believe. Exactly. exactly. That's how I feel. They're going to believe what they want to believe at the end of the day. So, like, um, things that I'm not in the business of convincing nobody, especially when it comes to God. People always be like, oh, you believe in invisible man? But okay. you just said you like to debate, so. I like to debate you people that. Yourself. I am, but I like to debate. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You contradict yourself a lot. But I like to debate, but when it comes to me convincing people about God and stuff, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. People got to look at both sides. So, yeah, people don't like to see both sides. That's the big thing. They don't like to see both sides, for real. But I did just contradict myself because I like debating. But at the end of the day, when it comes to, like, a toxic debate or it get rowdy, no, I'm going to let you have it because I'm not letting that side. I'm, at the end of the day, I'm a child of God. I ain't letting it out. I refuse now. I refuse to let somebody bring the old me out. Or I refuse to let somebody bring anger out when I'm at peace. I refuse to let somebody disrupt my peace. It's not going to happen. And even if you do disrupt my peace, like, my shit's like, that's why I stop. Everybody be letting me have it for real. Maybe because I'm short. I don't know. <laughs> Some of them, you have it. They do. And I be thinking people understand me. The whole time y'all don't. <laughs> so you still say you don't understand. <laughs> what? Okay, maybe something stuff you don't understand. I don't know. I think a lot of times you don't understand. But I, I understand. I done been in reality. I, I, I feel like I understand people because I can be around. I'm a diverse person. I can be around anybody and understand what they're going through. They don't want to what? Tussle. They don't want to tussle. <laughs> They just very, very laid back. I'm laid back as well. You and your brother will go on and know. Booby got it. Booby <laughs> has it. He has it. Mess up with y'all win. <laughs> Booby, if me and Booby was a debate, that'll be going on to next, next no months right now. Like. Booby can have it. I'm not going back and forth with him. Cause, now, he's one person I can honestly say he only see one side. He only see one side. His side. He only, I'm about to say he. And he gonna try to convince you just to see his side. Yeah, and that's what I think. I don't try to convince people to believe what I believe. I just want y'all to hear both sides. Because, like, if a, if a, what do you call it? A Muslim or somebody come to me trying to convince me that Muslim is over Christian, whatever. I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to try to understand your side. But in day, my belief is not going to change. So. I just know I get mad a lot. So, like, I just, see me getting mad, uh, you win. Whatever. All I know is, I don't know what I know. But, y'all, like I said, it's a dump in an hour. This live been great. Um, so, the next three weeks, because I'm only doing Facebook and TikTok live a month. Then after that, if y'all want to see the podcast, which I hope y'all do, y'all can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's in the description right here. Y'all can subscribe, and then I will be uploading um, every Thursday at 7 o'clock, just like I'm going live. But I will be uploading every Thursday at 7 o'clock, YouTube videos only. So, after the fourth week, so just the first week, after the fourth week, we will be going straight to YouTube. Next week, our co-host guest will be Allie Addison, y'all. Y'all know Allie Addison. And I can't wait for this conversation because that conversation right there, y'all really going to want to be there for. I'm telling y'all how we came from the from the um, streets to the pews. I think we get into unnecessary debates because our job is to inform, not transform. God does a transform, right. not us. Amen. Right, Amen. And that's why when it comes to um, debating about God, I don't debate. Because what I'm going to argue for when the word says this, you can't go against the word. But people will say, you can't go against the word. Because that ain't the word. You can have it. I'm not doing it. That's why I just don't talk about it. And see, I used to be like that too, not talk about religion. But one thing I do know, God do want us to stand up for his word. Because just like God had to go to jail and took persecution... We're going to have to do the same thing. That's a, that's why you live in sacrifice. When you give your yes to God, you got to be willing to sacrifice everything. That's what me and my sister talked about last week. And she was like, I don't know if I can give my child. If God tell me to give my child, call me Abraham. Here go my child. But um, some people, it's just, I think my faith is so strong because somebody asked me that today. Why your faith, how your faith got that strong? And then they was like, well, you've been doing here for so long. My faith did got strong because I've been doing here for 10 years down straight without punching the clock. Well, I did punch in the clock for like a month. And, um, <laughs> but the have to live a very successful life of not, not the success, but this is a successful life. People think success is money, a uh, mountain money, but 
to live a very successful, abundant life. My faith came from depending on the next day, which is my clients. What you say? My faith is strong. And it always strong. It was always strong. And it definitely was. But my faith came from depending on my income, my source of income. And like I tell people, God is my source. Like, I'm not finna sit up here. Everybody always think, you know, oh, Monet got this and that third. She like nice stuff. I do like nice stuff. But God favored me. God provides. And that's what I mean. God provides that stuff for me. God br brings that stuff to me. Like, God allowed the finances to be in my pockets to have that stuff. And then some days, I don't have it. People be like, somebody said that how you can have a job and still be homeless. Times is hard. But there are some days where I am down to zero. There are some days where I got a, a lot of zeros in my account. So, my God is my source. That's where my faith come from. But I keep getting off track, you know, because I'm ready to eat the salad. Um, next week, it'll be Allie Addison on live at 7 o'clock with me. She'll be my co-host. Follow my, um, subscribe to my YouTube. I'm going to leave her um, YouTube in the comments as well. Thank y'all. And also, y'all, so let me tell y'all this. I have a prayer and decree picnic coming up August the 6th. I'm going to do 20 people a group because I think I'm going to do group A, group B, group 1, group 2. All of that because I don't want it to be a lot of us in the park. So I I want to do yeah twenty people August the sixth. If y'all interested, interested. If y'all interested in um coming to the picnic, it'll be twenty five dollars. It's a prayer and decree picnic. The twenty five dollars will fund the food and the prayer boards and you know all of the stuff. Hey Dina, Dina, Dina on TikTok and uh -huh. Tara on um Facebook. But yeah, if y'all. If y'all want to um, be a part of that, just inbox me. Let me know. I'm going to make a post as well, too. But I'm only taking 20 people for this first group. And it's August the 6th. It's a prayer and decree picnic. Come out. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time, y'all. They think being a Christian is so boring. But really, I'll be lit. Me and my friends be lit. Um, the next thing, what a girl needs. We will be relaunching on August the 7th. And it's August the 6th. Coming up, it's on a Sunday. And I think I. I just said, what's the date again for the brunch? Come I just in. told her. She said, what's it again? I just told her just now. For the brunch, not your lunch. She's talking about the, um, uh, yeah, August the 6th. Oh. The, so the prayer and the creep picnic is August the 6th. Inbox me if you want to come so I can, um, give you all the details. And like I said, it's $25 and I have fun the food and all of the prayer boards and the blankets and, you know, the picnic stuff. Um, what a girl needs will be relaunching on August the seventh, which is that following day. So we strictly went to Christian route. I wanted to do something for um not I wanted to do something. God is using what a girl needs for his vessel. Um y'all know I had what a girl needs. It was it was great. It wasn't how can I say it was successful. That business was actually very successful. But God um had me shut it down for like a year or some change and now I'm relaunching. And I wanted to change the name to what a woman needs because I'm not a girl no more. I'm a woman now. I'm mature, wise. But it's what a girl needs. And we will be selling, like, um, still the name necklaces, all the, the, what do you call it? I won't be selling lashes no more. But the name necklaces, the name earrings, all of that stuff, customizable jewelry, I will be selling those. And, you know, God is really showing me my worth. The prices will be up a little bit because, y'all, I can show y'all now. I can show y'all now. There's some jewelry that ain't. I'm Just telling y'all. Why you not doing lashes on? I'm going to be real. Who finna pay these people $5 a lash when you can go to Chinese Space or the hair store and get them for $2? I told you I got right. a five pack for $2.99. I'm not finna. No. God said. God told me. That's what he told me. He said um, he's selling all of this stuff. My mission statement for what a girl needs, I did not have one. It just was for girls to look pretty. Now, my mission statement is a woman needs her faith. A woman needs her Bible. Her wom a woman needs her stuff, her purity, her innocence. Her woman, a woman needs everything God birthed us with that we soon lose after we get older and do all the crazy stuff that we do. So, we will be selling, like I said, jewelry. It will be a jewelry store now. Um, what else? Uh, I wrote, I am writing my book. My book will be like my testimony and all of that. It's just about my life, going through my deliverance and all of that. I, I'm so happy for that. Um, it'll be an e-book and a printable book, but it'll be the e-book first, and that will be on August the 
7. We will be launching at 7 o'clock. 7 is the number of completion. Um, August is the number 8. I mean, the 8th month. And 8th is the number of new beginnings. So what a girl needs will be starting off with a fresh slate. None of the stuff from back in the day. Whatever now I'm going to be having. And I don't even say selling the most providing. Whatever I'm going to be provide, providing now is to get you closer to God. I do got a Bible study journal that's coming out. Um, it helps you break down what you um, reading on. Like It has the anchor scripture, your thoughts. It'll be nice. It's nice. Y'all going to see the stuff soon. I'll be selling, like I said, jewelry rings, purity rings, and you know different type of stuff like that. That's what will be on the site. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Not yet. But this is one of the um, purity rings that I'm going to be selling or whatever. It's 925 sterling silver. And like I said, God really gave me the resources. That's how I know that God is really wanting me to strictly relaunch Water Girl Needs because when I say the resources just dropped in my face, like all of the information I needed, everything that my site has have is high quality. It took me two years to get to where I'm at now. Well, how long? No, a year and a half. It took me a year and a half to get to where I'm at now with this business again. And everything is high quality. So, like I said, I know for a fact that the um, name necklaces will be $65 now instead of $35. So, it's double the price. And because things that went up since I had a business, like, it done went up. So, y'all would definitely be getting the quality. Like I said, I still, I'm going to make a video on um, Facebook and Instagram on how the jury looking after, like, 2019. I still got some jury. Matter of fact, entertainer. Let me look for it. Girl, what do you about Talk to them people, boo. I don't know what to see. Oh, yeah, that jury is um, the jury, though, because I still got mine. I don't know where my stuff at. But, <laughs> who laughing at? Yeah, I'll tell you, I don't be going live. Y'all never see me really with live because I don't do this. Like, she's the talker. I'm not a talker. Like, it's up here. I talk to people that I talk to in real life, but, like, doing it, stuff like this. And all. Yeah, entertain them. I'm going to get that room. And this girl really going somewhere else. That's what you got to do, but you got to get him. <laughs> and you just look at the camera. Not the whole <laughs> YouTuber. Gold and silver. Yeah, this time I will be having silver. The last time I didn't have silver, but this time I will be having silver, but it will be coming later on. Y'all, don't mind me, but this is the truth. Oh, Lord. This is the authenticity. How you say it? Let me authenticity. Much though, it's so funny. Yo, she just not coming in and be over. This is my jewelry little thing. This is my name necklaces right here, y'all. After being, you know, when you put jewelry on top of jewelry, it fades and stuff, y'all. 2019 was four years ago. Oh, you can't believe my head. Yeah, that was like four, five years ago, y'all. Four, five years ago. And look how the jewelry looking. This this jewelry right here, I did my thing. When I found my resource, when God gave me that resource, y'all, I really did my thing. So y'all, I'm telling y'all now, God said that them prices got to be $65. So, but of course, I'm going to have like after paying stuff on there as well. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to have, have, have after pay on there as well. So y'all don't have to worry about that. So... Recap, picnic, August the 6th at 7. Y'all want to do 6 or 7? We're going to do 6.30 because I want to do it right before the sun go down. 6.30 p.m., August the 6th. Who's going to be at again? Good Hagen Park. It's going to be at Good Hagen Park. So, um, M.A.M. Gang. Thank you, thank you. Love M.A.M. Gang, right? I ain't heard that in a long time. M.A.M. Right? M.A.M. <laughs> But yeah, the, I ain't seen you in so long. Um, Tempest. me neither. And her kids look just like her, right? No boys look just like you, just like you. But prayer and decree picnic is at seven o'clock p.m. I mean six thirty p.m. August sixth. Inbox me if you wanna go. I mean come twenty five dollars at the Hagen Park. Um, what a girl needs relaunch on August the seventh at seven o'clock p.m. And that's what I meant to tell you. She got a daughter. I meant to tell you too. Oh, I must have missed the daughter. The daughter was the last one? I'm having a launch party for my, my thing. You got a launch party for your brain coming back up? Yeah. Here, it's going to be here. Just us. But, um, yeah, that and then 
Bible study. Oh yeah. Look at Terrace. <laughs> Bible study. I host Bible study every Tuesday at seven o'clock. We might change it to seven thirty because some people get home late. This is the church announcement is part of it. Oh. Yeah, this is a church announcement. <laughs> Acknowledgement right here. Bible study will be held. Um <laughs> Every Tuesday at 7 o'clock or 7.30 p.m. But you have to um, let me know that you want to be in the group because it's a group. And once you get in a group, you can get the notifications on when we um, do the video call and all of that. Bible study every Tuesday. We might got a prayer call coming too. We might have a prayer call coming too. But the Bible study is only for women. I know a lot of men want to come in the Bible study too, so I might do one. But see, that's why... Yeah, because you won't, you won't do nothing for men. I wanted to do this one for men, but... My friend that got me doing this, she was like, only women. Because she having me doing this, y'all. She asked me, you want to do this? And have me doing everything. Having me preaching sermons and all that in this Bible study. But, um, yeah. But that's how God working in my life. Like, God is moving aside everything that, like, you know, used to serve me that don't serve me no more. Because God really take up most of my time. And I am perfectly fine with that. I am so happy with that. She want to join a video. She probably didn't mean to do that. But yeah, Bible said every Tuesday, brunch, August the 6th, um, 6.30 p.m. Water Girl Needs Lunch, August the 7th. Make sure y'all remember that. And the, the podcast next week at 7, 7. o'clock Thursday. So it was nice talking to y'all. We had a good Ooh, time. I was, I was nervous. I got a whole headache now. That girl got a whole headache. You still nervous? No. But I got a headache now. She probably gonna be on my podcast more too, cause every day, every week is gonna be somebody different, somebody new, maybe different. And y'all, whoever, if y'all know some people that you know want to be on the podcast, just let me know, put them in the comments, and I will get them on here. Y'all have a blessed night, and be safe. You gotta be, you gotta go. And you ain't even try to end a live on nothing.